Today we're going to teach you the proper way to set up your position limits on the Limitorque L120 electric actuator. In order to do this properly and safely, we recommend the following tools and PPE. Our first step is to isolate power. Make sure that the power has been turned off, locked out, tagged out. Once power has been isolated, we need to remove the electrical controls cover. For this, we will need our 6mm Allen wrench and we will need to loosen the 6 bolts that hold this cover on. Exercise caution when removing the cover to ensure that the cover does not fall. The 6 bolts that secure the cover to the housing are located at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and 11 o'clock. Now that we've located the main power connection on the diagram, we need to use our meter and double check to ensure that there is no power present at any phase. We will check each phase to ground and phase to phase. Before we can set the limit switch, we need to locate the limit switch in the compartment and we need to understand the contact development chart on our wiring diagram. On some Limitorque L120 models, a basic integral controls package, or a BIC for short, is installed. The BIC package includes a control transformer and factory installed starter which are located in the electrical compartment on a plate that hinges on the limit switch. The limit switch setting rod and intermediate shafts are behind the hinge plate. Now that we've located the limit switch, let's go over the rotor and contact assignments and development. We have two sides to each contact and we have four sets of contacts per rotor. We will first look at the open rotor. Contacts 1 through 4 are used on the open rotor. 1 and 1C are used as a torque switch bypass. Contact 2 and 2C are used as a spare function. And you will notice that there are no factory wires landed on 2 and 2C. Contacts 3 and 3C are used to control an indicator light and contacts 4 and 4C are the position limit that is wired to the torque switch. Contacts 5 through 8 are used as the closed rotor. 5 and 5C are used as a torque switch bypass for the close direction. Contacts 6 and 6C are used as a spare function. And again, you will notice that 6 and 6C have no factory wires landed on them. Contacts 7 and 7C are used to control an indicator light. And contacts 8 and 8C are the position limit that is wired to the torque switch on the close side. Let's take a look at part of the wiring diagram so that we can understand how to set the limit before we pull it into practice. We're going to zoom in on two parts of this drawing, the lights driven by the light switch and the limit switch contact development chart. So on the lower left hand side of the screen, there's a drawing of a limit switch and a diagram depicting what an open contact looks like versus a closed contact. This diagram's point of view is from the top of the limit switch looking down. If we look at the upper right hand part of the side, we'll see a legend that shows us how to read the limit switch contact development chart. A dashed line that indicates an open contact and a solid block indicates our closed contact. If we take a closer look at the chart, we will see that there are four different rotors and each rotor has four different contacts. As I mentioned earlier, contacts one through four deal with the open rotor, five through eight deal with the close rotor, and then we have two additional rotors for intermediate travel positions. The intermediate rotor contacts are not typically wired to any factory equipment, so they are usually listed as spares and can be set to trip at whatever position the user would like. The chart has a section titled valve position and it shows a valve position of full open, mid travel A, mid travel B, and full close. We're only going to be looking at the setting rotors 1 and 2 for our limits. Let's look at the contacts in mid travel. Mid travel is defined as the positions from 0.1% to 99.9% .9 open. We can see that contacts 1 and 2 are open in mid-travel, and conversely, contacts 3 and 4 are closed. 
Also notice that contacts 1 and 2 cannot be closed when 3 and 4 are closed. This is due to the construction of limit switch cams. Looking further down, we see the contacts 5 and 6 are also open in mid-travel, while 7 and 8 are closed contacts. So now we know that in mid-travel, the limits, contacts 4 and 8 must be closed. We also know that contacts 3 and 4 have the same action. So while in mid-travel, the green light fed by contact 3 is on and contact 7 and 8 have the same function. So while in mid-travel, the red light fed by contact 7 is also on. Let's look at what happens at our open limit. We can see here that contacts 1 and 2 have changed states and are now closed, and 3 and 4 are now open contacts. I said in mid-travel both limits were closed contacts, but now that we're at the open limit, the open limit contact has opened up. Remember this. When you are setting the limits, the contact opens at the end of travel. Let's take a look at the close rotor and the open limit. Nothing has changed. Our red light is still on. This means that the red light, which is typically open indication, is on at open and all the way through mid-travel. The green light, which is typically close indication, shuts off at the full open position. Finally, let's look at our close limit. Contacts 1 and 2 are still open from mid-travel and contacts 3 and 4 are still closed from mid-travel. But let's take a look at the close rotor. At the close rotor limit, contacts 5 and 6 close and contacts 7 and 8 open up. It's just the opposite of the open rotor. Remember, when we set the limits, we are setting the point that the contact feeding the limit opens. Now let's look at the practical side of setting the limits. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the limit switch indicates mid-travel. Remember, both limits are closed contacts in mid-travel. So let's look at contacts 4 and 8 and make sure that they are closed contacts. If either one of these contacts are open, we need to adjust the limit switch. As it turns out, this limit switch is set completely incorrectly and we need to adjust it so it shows mid-travel. If you look at contacts 4 and 8, you will notice that the cams are vertical, which indicates an open contact. Remember, in mid-travel, these contacts need to be closed. Let's declutch the unit and turn the hand wheel in the closed direction first and make note of which way our intermediate shafts are turning. As I turn the hand wheel in the closed direction, we can see that the intermediate shafts are turning in the clockwise direction. Logic would dictate that if I go in the open direction, the intermediate shafts would spin counterclockwise. But it's always a good idea to check that as well. In order to adjust the limit switch to show mid-travel, first, depress the setting rod and turn it 90 degrees. Next, we will turn our closed intermediate shaft in the opposite direction to open the limits. So we will turn our screwdriver counterclockwise. Once our cam has rotated to the horizontal position, we aren't done because we don't want our limit to be set here in mid-travel. Continue turning the screwdriver in the counterclockwise direction for a few more turns. We're only setting an arbitrary position at the moment. Next, we need to set the open intermediate shaft into mid-travel. To do this, we will turn the open shaft in the clockwise direction until our cam trips. Similar to the closed rotor, once we've tripped the cam, we need to continue turning the screwdriver in the clockwise direction to set an arbitrary trip point. We will fine tune the limits later. Make sure to release the setting rod when you finish spinning the intermediate shafts by turning the rod 90 degrees. Now we're going to set the close limit first. If you're closer to the end of travel, you can set the open limit first. It does not matter which is set first. Just make sure that you're spinning the appropriate intermediate shaft in the appropriate direction. I'm going to spin the hand wheel in the closed direction until I feel the valve hit the bottom of the seat. Once I feel the valve bottom out, 
I will remove hand wheel backlash and back the hand wheel up to half a hand wheel turn and set my close limit there. Remember, contact 7 and 8 open at the close limit, so we need to set the rotor to change states at this point of travel. As you can see, the contact is still showing mid-travel, so we need to depress the setting rod and turn the close intermediate shaft in the clockwise direction. Remember, if the contact is not tripped yet, you need the intermediate shaft in the same direction of travel. But if the contact is already tripped or opened up, then you need to rotate the intermediate shaft in the opposite direction. Once we've set the closed rotor to trip and have the closed limit open up at this position, we need to take the setting rod and rotate it 90 degrees to re-engage the gear train assembly. It's a good idea to jiggle the intermediate shaft that you just rotated to make sure the gears mesh and your limit does not get messed up. The electrical controls cover is removed. We do not want to apply power to this unit. I will run the unit open with the hand wheel and just as I did with the closed limit, I will run it open until I feel the valve max out and travel. Remove the backlash of the hand wheel and turn the valve half of a hand wheel turn in the closed direction. So we know that the intermediate shafts turn counterclockwise while opening the valve. We see that the open limit is still showing a closed contact, so we need to depress and turn the setting rod 90 degrees and then turn the open intermediate shaft in the counterclockwise direction until it trips at this valve travel position. Once the open rotor is set to trip and the contact opens up at the limit, take the setting rod and rotate it 90 degrees to re-engage the gear train assembly. Just like when we set the closed limit, it's a good idea to jiggle the intermediate shaft that you just rotated to make sure that the gears mesh and your limit does not get messed up. Now that our limits are set, it's time to reinstall the cover. Make sure that the BIC hinge is shut if your unit is equipped with a BIC package. Use caution when reinstalling the electrical controls cover so that wires do not get pinched in the flame path. Get one bolt started and snug it enough to allow the cover to be held in place by the bolt and then start the remaining six bolts. Restore power to the unit. Let's check and make sure our limits are set properly. Since we just set the open limit, we will check the valve in the closed direction and make sure that it comes out of D-clutch properly and trips at the valve limit and not on torque. We will know that it trips on limit if our red light shuts off at the end of travel. Okay, the closed limit looks good. Let's run the valve open to make sure that the open limit looks good and then we can call this procedure complete.